Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a first impressions video on mermaid manga. You may or may not know that I am a self-proclaimed expert on mermaid manga. That's an inside joke, don't worry about it. A Sinner of the Deep Sea. This is published by Yen Press and it is written and drawn by Akihito Tomi. I was pleasantly surprised picking this up. I was intrigued by the cover. I love a character with red hair so I was immediately in and it turns out this story is pretty fun. At only 20 chapters collected across three volumes this is going to be a nice quick simple read but I did not know about Akihito Tomi. I love his art. It is amazing in my honest opinion. This tells the story of Joe, a mermaid who lives in this society that's basically their Atlantis, if you will. Deep into the abyss in the ocean, they have constructed this pretty elaborate, beautiful looking society to escape from humans. They do not want any sort of interaction because of course we like to mess with stuff and the natural order of things. So the first chapter chapter of this manga begins with Joe's daily activities which just include exploring the ocean and in a beautiful scene which immediately drew me into this manga she is swimming along and finds a baby whale and the mother soon shows up and you see this playful interaction between all three and I thought it was just breathtaking. I love how it gets the anatomy right of these creatures and of course the mermaid even though they're fictional, you could see them existing in real life and it looks right, I think. The ocean is drawn beautifully, of course, like I mentioned before, and when Joe ventures into her home, eventually finding her apartment, you get to see the people, you get to see the structures, the buildings, her room, and of course the things that these mermaids get involved with, which is pretty similar to human society, just it happens to be underwater. And it's not until chapter two where the story really kicks off. We follow Joe's friend Ryu, who is a very famous mermaid. She sings, she's sort of a, a socialite and a celebrity amongst them. And she did the cardinal sin of interacting with a human. The other mermaids find out and they imprison her. So now it's up to Joe to figure out a way to set her free from this prison. And of course, possibly, maybe reunite the two lovers, even though Joe is not a fan of humans for reasons that have not been disclosed as of this first volume. And therein lies the beauty of this manga. I like how this is sort of the next step, the evolution of mermaid storytelling, where we have these characters who are pretty sick of humans and have just been secluded away. They prefer to live in the deep abyss of the ocean floor, away from all the shenanigans that we might cause. Also, we do get a chapter dedicated to the human characters, which is always good. So I hope with volume two, we get a little bit more exposition. It's a shame that it's only three volumes because I think you could tell more stories in this world judging by volume one. And once again, arguably the best selling point is the art. I think it looks fantastic. I love the anatomy of the mermaids. I love how the ocean looks, the sea creatures, even the human characters, everything looks fantastic in this. And I hope I've enticed you to pick it up at only three volumes like I mentioned earlier, not a huge commitment on your bookshelf. The next manga we're going to talk about is This Monster Wants to Eat Me, Volume 1. This is written by Sai Naikawa, also drawn by this creator, and I was really excited about this. Not only does it involve mermaids, but also other creatures or monsters. There's some Yuri aspects and drama to be found with some pretty interesting characters. In this, we find the character of Hinako Yaotose. Hinako, unfortunately, had a tragic event where she lost her family. She is alone now and I believe in either middle school or high school, one of the two, you'll have to forgive me for skipping on that detail, and she is trying to make the best of it, but there is of course grief and depression and other issues involved here and unfortunately would rather uh, go away from everything. Fortunately she has some friends in school in the character of Miko and she's always paying attention to 
Hinako and wanting to uh, get her involved in school things and other non-school related stuff. Sort of that friend that you need to boost your morale and get you through the hard times. On a particular day, the character of Hinako is sort of entranced and obsessed with this bridge and is thinking about the tragedy near her life and thinks of ending it all and jumping from that bridge or briefly considers it before she is stopped by this alluring mysterious girl called Shiori Omi. Shiori has a breezy ocean scent aura if you will to her that is very evocative of course of mermaid lore and it turns out that she is in fact a mermaid. She is disguised as a regular human. We don't know why yet but she's able to do that. However she's actually a more horrific uh, representation of a mermaid, more of a monster than a beautiful creature, and she actually tells Hinako that she wants to eat her. There is a scent from the main character that is very alluring for monsters and supernatural creatures and all that stuff. So like any hunter, you want to beef up that prey so that whenever you do decide to eat it, the taste will be all the better. So as weird and creepy as that sounds, She's sort of buttering up Hinako by being her friend and taking care of her with the supposed promise of one day consuming her. Hinako in her depression and grief doesn't seem to mind and isn't too shocked about it. Yes, she does find it surprising, but also kind of welcomes it. And it takes certain tragedies to sort of numb yourself of everything to the point where even the most extraordinary, almost unrealistic thing makes you welcome this relief from this unbearable pain. And you think this might actually set me free from the pain that I'm feeling. But we all know that it's not the case. There are ulterior motives for these creatures. We do see other monsters in this series as they also are attracted to the main character and want to eat her. So our mermaid character Shiori is defending the protagonist from these creatures, which is really cool. There are a lot of interesting designs from yokai to other ghoulish monsters, and I hope to see more of that. In terms of the art, I really do like it. It's different from A Center of the Deep Sea. This is much more soft-spoken, similar to our protagonist and the way she expresses herself. The art is very reflective on her current state of mind, and you see that. It's very beautifully drawn, and everything is subtle, like it's on the verge of turning into something else, but you do see the tranquility and beauty in the midst of this chaos and storm that is brewing in her heart and mind because of the tragedy she experienced. So this is currently ongoing. I have no idea how long it will be, but I don't suspect this will be a long running series. I do like where the story is headed. I like the characters and just the idea to mix up drama, love, romance with supernatural and uh, horror aspects. I think that is pretty awesome because all that stuff kind of goes hand in hand sometimes. Now this next one isn't really a first impressions because it's just one book, but I wanted to include it here because in one month we got three mermaid manga being released and that is pretty awesome and hilarious to me. So I picked up Mermaid Prince from Kaori Ozaki. This is the first time that I'm reading stuff from this creator and I gotta say, I'll be honest, story-wise, I think this was my favorite out of the three and I immediately became a fan of Ozaki and I'm looking Looking forward to reading other books from her. I think uh, she is extremely talented and this short story collection more than proves it. This book has three particular stories. We have the first one called Ametsuki Gihara. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, the short story One Snowy Day and The Mermaid Prince Tale. Now the first story has, or actually the first two stories have nothing to do with mermaids whatsoever. It's more thematic, I guess, with the challenges of growing up as uh, young people. And honestly, this is the type of material that a lot of people can identify with. 
you are confused, you're going through a lot when you're growing up, when you're a teenager into being a young adult. And these three stories exemplify that in different ways with similar story tropes. In the first story, we follow this girl who is pretty adventurous. She doesn't know exactly what she wants to do in life and is sort of just figuring it out at the moment. She's friends with this other girl who is sort of a smarty pants and wants the two of them to enter this school that I assume is uh, for super smart individuals and our main character does not want to do that. She doesn't see herself as that smart or being capable of entering. So she's just living in the moment. I should mention that she did witness the sort of self-absorbed uh, conversation that her friend was having with other schoolmates and how empty it sort of left her and how distant and realizing that everybody's way too different anyways. So our main protagonist can have fun by herself and not have to worry about what the other people are thinking and doing and all that stuff. This revelation or rebellion that happens leads her down to a path of meeting her friend's now ex-boyfriend and the two sort of spark an honest uh, kind of blunt conversation about love, spirituality, and a lot of other things. And it's sort of this fleeting moment that happens that I don't want to ruin, but I thought it was integral to the story and definitely shapes the character by the end of it. And it just goes to show you that sometimes you have the idea, you have the notion that uh, life is supposed to go one way and when it doesn't, you have the option to readjust yourself and sort of like go down this new path, realizing that other stuff that you had in mind, those preset goals aren't everything and life is much more flexible than that. The second story, One Snowy Day, is sort of unfortunately the least interesting out of the three. It is a fateful encounter that this librarian has with an odd father and son and the result is pretty magical but it's just way too short. It's sort of like a vignette, a brief moment in time that happens which I do appreciate but compared to the other stories it was a little bit weaker. And then of course the third plot of this book happens to be the title of the manga. Mermaid Prince follows the character of Mugi, this big city kid who moves into Okinawa with his sister. She recently got married and Mugi is not necessarily down for that and is not a fan of her husband. The guy is a sweetheart and is a uh, swimming instructor. So this is a very different scenario for this kid. Now Mugi has a friend, this young girl called Matori, who is practically his only friend. Matori is developing a crush throughout these three chapters and after an eventful moment, Mugi decides to run away from his house and ends up learning about mermaid lore from Matari's grandma. And it is said that in this grove, if you are able to find this mermaid and you make a wish, she will grant it for you. Now the grove is super dangerous. Something happens that I'm not going to spoil, which puts them at risk and they do have to search for that grove or grotto, however you want to call it. This was easily the most dramatic story out of the three. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fascinating. I do think, however, that uh, yes, this is a pretty easy story, self-contained at three chapters. I do think maybe you could have added, I don't know, two more to sort of add an extra oomph and to sort of give more characterizations to these people to maybe explore the dynamics of them of the family or the towns and stuff like that i kind of wanted a little bit more the setting was really good and you had some really interesting topics here with mugi dealing with trauma growing up and how everything changes around you and maturi of course coming into her own and accepting her feelings towards mugi and the mermaid lore which was really fascinating is there a mermaid in this book? Well, you're going to have to read to find out. Uh, spoilers, maybe. <laughs> but I definitely enjoyed it a ton. I thought it had a wonderful resolution as well. A uh, really well written all throughout. Actually, all three stories were great. Even if I didn't like one over the other, all three of them had this motif, this of 
accepting change and how do we deal with it and stuff like that. The art is lovely. I was a huge fan of this. The colored pages are great too. Gives it uh, more finesse uh, for these short stories. And I gotta say, I'm definitely a fan of Kaori Ozaki. I am going to check out more of her work and I'm excited to talk about them eventually on this channel. That's going to be it for now. Thank you everybody for tuning in. If you've read any of these books, let me know in the comment section below. And if you haven't, what are some other similar type of stories that you think I should check out? Pretty interested in finding out as well. Thank you everybody once again for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of Manga Geekdom. Down in the description below, you'll find links to my Discord channel if you want to participate and join an awesome community of like-minded weebs and nerds, and my second channel, which is Manga Geek them live. I will be doing live streams over there. So if you want to subscribe and uh, hang out with me on those streams, I look forward to it. So that's going to be it. Thank you, everybody. Once again, God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.